uh, the Industrial Revolution, a time of soot and coal and smoke and brass and different things like that, right, that have to do with the changing of history, going from the Dark Ages, the Renaissance and all that, into this new period of industrialization where people are able to rise out of poverty on their own, right, because of all the wonderful new inventions. But that brings us to a fantastic game that we know as Brass Lancashire. You've heard me do this review before. You've seen me talk about Brass Lancashire. Fantastic game. I absolutely love it. But question of the day, what do you look for in a sequel? Now, think about this for a second. Are we talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark? It's such a fantastic movie, right? It's got everything you want. And then you get Temple of Doom and you go, I don't know if I liked that very much, even though that was a sequel. Technically, it was a prequel because it came before, but whatever. It came out after. Or do you have the, oh my gosh, it's Star Wars. New Hope was fantastic. One of the greatest movies of all time. You're telling me there's a movie that's even better than it called uh, The Empire Strikes Back? <laughs> Mind blown. I'll be there, right? Well... That is the conundrum. What is your favorite sequel to a board game? That's the question of the day. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite sequel is to a board game. Because today, we're not talking about Brass Lancashire. We're talking about Brass Birmingham, the follow-up from Martin Wallace of the Brass series. Let's talk about what it does differently. If you should get both of these, if you should get neither of these. Actually, you already know you should get this one because you've seen that review. And... Uh, what the differences are between these two right now. So let's do this first. Before we go any further in this review, I'm going to give you two options. Uh, the first part of the video is going to be the quick overview of what's different about Brass Birmingham versus Brass Lancashire. If you've never played either, stick around a few minutes more and we'll give you the full playthrough of how to play Brass Birmingham right now. But let's take a look right now what's different in between these two just here. First and foremost, this is the original Brass Lancashire map down here. 1870 to 18 or 1770 to 1870 you have this map laid out there are a few things to note there is a foreign cotton market here and there are the old school tiles now let's look at the new map and see what it has now you have the daytime mode and the nighttime mode we play the nighttime mode every time because it looks just absolutely gorgeous so you have the nighttime the black country from the 1770 to 1870 again you have no foreign market but you do have spaces for wild cards, and we'll talk about those in a minute, you do have noticed that the market's here on the outside of the board. So everything selling to uh, outside, there are no ports anymore, notice that's not a thing. You're selling to these areas, and these will populate with actual demand tokens for what these markets want to buy from you. They also have spots where they will hold beer, and once you, if you choose to use their beer, you'll get to take a little additional bonus. So notice the board looks a little bit different. Uh, the money is uh, up and down versus bottom. Uh, left to right doesn't really matter. It's just aesthetically pleasing. But uh, I'll talk about the wild cards in a minute. Let's look at the two player boards first of all. See the main differences here. So notice the size difference alone. Brass Birmingham is a good bit bigger than Brass Lancashire. In Lancashire, you have just the cotton mills, the uh, ports, the uh, shipyards, ironworks, and then coal. And that's it for the buildings. Over here in Birmingham, though, you have these craft goods. You have cotton again. You have breweries, you have coal, you have ironworks, and then you have these clay pits. Now these are new resources here, these two, as well as beer. Works the same way. If you want to upgrade these, you obviously have to, you know, pull until you can upgrade the same symbol. This can only be used during the canal era. These can only be used during the railroad era. You see all those symbols out here still. Uh, canal and then railroad, obviously, for some of these ones, they have a black symbol on it. The same thing holds, you know, it tells you how many links they count for if you're attached to them um, with your actual network and things. So it's basically the same thing out here, except these goods work like cotton mills. They just give different points. So uh, they're a little bit cheaper to get ahead of time. You know, you, they, they just work differently, but kind of the same at the same time. They're just cheaper here than cotton is to start with. So it's, you know, it's a way to get more things out on the board. There is no flat shipyard anymore, so these are the closest estimate to it, where the first one's worth 10 points, second one's worth one, then 11, then one, so every other one's worth a lot of points, so you kind of pretty much have to upgrade past that to get to another good one, basically. Because, um, I mean, there really is no benefit to building these twos and fours, it's the one, three, five that gets you. Uh, again, you have to use beer and these, and this is the other tricky part, you can't actually upgrade this one, like you can't use the, uh, uh, the, the action where you 
pull off to make it better. Why is that word not coming? Develop. You can't use develop action on those, so it's an interesting little tweak. But they're worth a lot of points if you manage to get them all out there. You do sell them and activate the same way as you would craft goods and cotton. So that's what those are for. Now the main difference are these wild cards. There are two wild cities and two wild uh, industries each. What happens is one of the actions you can do is you can spend a card out of your hand and discard two cards to draw a wild industry and a wild location card. Yes, it does cost you an action to get these, but in the end, you can build anywhere with these on any city or on any industry in a town. So it's neat to have these in your hand. Uh, you obviously can't have more than one of each type, but it's a cool tweak that adds balance when you feel kind of stuck sometimes. Uh, same thing down here for these. These are just the you know basic same wonderful, beautiful new art cards that are in this Roxley version. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous cards. The art on these is just fantastic. You just want to look at it all the time and just see the wonderful industry art. Uh, it makes you wish you could kind of step back in time uh, and see this, you know, again, culturally aside with all the, the smog and the things in the air, but I mean, you just want to see this happen in real life. And that's what uh, the artists do such a good job of making you want to actually see uh, what they've created here in real life. So that's one of the beautiful things I can't say enough about in the art in this game. A uh, little, you know, reference card is always good to have, but uh, that's how the, they really differ. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview as far as the game itself, how to play uh, Birmingham right now. Uh, because it's not a lot different, really, if you play brass. But let's just pretend you haven't played brass before at all. I'll show you what the game looks like set up, and we'll go from there. So now we're set up for a full four-person game. All the cards go up here in the top. You'll see that there. Uh, the uh, wild cards go here. The markets are placed here, 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 and here. You'll notice the beer tokens are put on each one of those. They're nice little wooden barrels that are cool. They're, uh, they just denote that you have a beer resource. What's going to happen on your turn is it's a card-driven game, even though it doesn't feel like it. You will take a hand of eight cards. The first turn, you'll play one card instead of two. Normally, you'll play two actions per round. Um, score is kept at the end of two times. There's a canal era, and you'll notice on the board these canals are blue. And you may not be able to see it, but the rails are black right under it. Some places only have canals, i.e. here. Some places only have rails. In the rail era, you can't use canals. In the canal era, you can't use rails. Pretty, pretty similar, right? Now, obviously, you'll notice in the rail era, there are more places you can get to than you could in the canal era. You'll notice that the uh, markets are populated with certain demand tokens. So this one will take anything. This one over here wants only pottery. Uh, this one will take craft goods. Up there is cotton. Up there is cotton as well. And some of them just don't have anything on them. The beer tokens that are there, sometimes when you sell a good, you have to provide a beer. When you do use the market's beer instead of your own, you get to take the little bonus that there. This would be the develop action symbol. This would be you just increase your income by an additional two. That one is three victory points. That one is $5. And this one is four victory points. So it's just ways to continue giving yourself more points. On your turn, you can do uh, two of the actions that are listed. These would be the build action. So you can place an industry tile on the board. That would be based on the cost over here. So let's say you wanted to build that cotton right there. It costs you $12. You can only build this one in the canal era, $12. When you activate it, when you activate buildings in different ways, it gives you five victory points. It will when you actually score them. And it increases immediately your income level by five. And it's connected to one link. Now that's important for scoring. You will actually start over here with your token, your income level is to the right, your victory points are to the left. So as you move up this track, you will be getting uh, certain levels of, uh, you'll have two tokens, one's a victory point and one's money. But as you move up this track, it may say increase your income level by three points. You'll get one, two, three. Well, then you're still in the one range. Let's say you do five, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five. You then during the income phase will get four, just because it's where this number is, even though your disc is over here, because this number encompasses a few different numbers. Now. Building, that's how buildings work. Network, you can build either a canal or a railroad link. When you build a canal, it costs you, um, uh, it's down here, it's $3, and you can only build it during the canal phase. When you build railroads during the rail phase, it costs you a coal. Coal has to be gotten from a network, and a network means, uh, I'm sorry, you have to be connected to coal. So it could be someone else's coal you're getting, or it could be from the market up here. Notice the market will empty. You can sell to the market, fill it up, you can also activate things by doing that. But you have to be able to get coal, whether by from an actual port that has coal. You'll see those on here. Or, 
like this. Gloucester, for instance, has coal in its port right here. Or if you have a coal mine out there and you're connected to it, you do not have to have it in your network. That means that there could be somebody else's road, uh, canal here and then yours here. But as long as you can trace it through to there, you can get coal to where you need it. Or if it's in your network, you it, it depends on where you can build. So when you build, for instance, uh, if you have a, uh, a, a industry card, an industry card, you have to build in network. If you have a location card there, you can just build at that location based on whatever's there. Now you have to build based on the requirements. So you do have to get coal through being connected to a coal source. I know that's a little crazy, a little confusing, but if you just look at it in the rules and if you just kind of read through it, the Roxy rules do a really good job of explaining that. There are some great videos as well that explain the difference between connection and network as well. Certain things have to do with network, which means it has to be in your own personal network. Certain things have to do with connected, which means as long as you can just trace a path to it. Coal getting to a building is connected. Building in an, a city with an industry card is based on network. Those are the two main ones. There are other couple ones too. So you got network, you've got build. Develop is where you spend an iron. You always discard a card. Spend an iron, and that could be taken. Iron can be taken from anywhere, including the market. You pay the cost to the left of these things. Or if you have an ironworks out there, you can take it from your own ironworks building. Take the iron off, and then on your player board, you'll take one of the tokens that's sitting on these off. Now, why would you do that? Well, you notice as these go up, they progress in points. So you may want to just get some of these off the board so you can get these built onto the board faster to where they'll be better points. Now, again, you cannot develop this one and this one purposely because they're worth more points. So you can't just kind of skip past them to get to the 20. But that's the only ones that have that requirement. So if you want to kind of get some of these out of the way so you can get to these more higher scoring point ones, that's what you do with the development. Plus, certain buildings, level one, will go away in the railroad phase. So if you have unactivated level one buildings out here, they're gonna go away. So you kinda wanna get past that as fast as you can. You then have the sell action. Now you can sell craft goods, you can sell cotton, and you can sell uh, the pottery. And what happens is you'll find a market that you're connected to, you will sell that for whatever price, uh, and by, by you won't actually sell it for price, you'll get the income. You'll activate that building, so you'll flip it over, show that it's activated, you'll score the income for selling that thing. So if you're selling this craft good, for instance, you'll flip that token over, and whatever it is, so let's just say you had this token out on the board here. You'll flip it over, it will give you three victory points when you score mid round. You will get six on the income, and then it is ready now to be connected with links. So the way this works is, in the scoring phase, in between the railroad and the canal era, you're going to see how many of your actual links, which look like these, by the way, I should show you, your actual links are connected to flipped over industries. So, uh, or it's not even just flipped over industries, it's this symbol in general. So notice that this, uh, this has this symbol here, these two little lines, that is counted as having two links. So let's just say this is now flipped over. There are two links there. Well, if I have a canal here, and a canal here, and a canal here, you'll score every single canal, and every canal, and then again in the railroad phase, will score for each of these symbols it's adjacent to. So all of these are worth two, four, six. Now if there was something here, if there was something here, if there was something here, or I should say here, uh, you would score off everything this is connected to. So you could potentially get, even with other people's, two, four, six, eight from just this one link. So that you can get eight, 16, 24 points just that quickly. So it's an easy way to get points, and it's one of the better ways to get points if you feel like you're just not able to build that much stuff. Well, get out there and get connected to other people's successful areas so that they are essentially thematically using your transport services, but it means you get points for it, basically. Uh, the loan action doesn't sound like a good thing, but it actually is. You just drop three spaces on the income level, so one, two, three, and then take $30. Everything costs money, so it's good to have. Scout action, that's where you discard an additional two cards uh, and then take a wild industry and a wild location. So those are all the actions you can do. Again, you'll score midway through the game, see where everybody stacks up from the canal phase. You'll pull everything level one off the board. You'll then uh, redo it with level twos. Score again, whoever wins, wins, basically. The only difference is breweries. These are things that if they're in your, if you build a brewery, you can take beer from it at any point, any place, doesn't matter. If it's someone else's beer you're using, you have to be connected to it uh, one way or the other. So that's brass, 
Birmingham in a nutshell. For those who have not played either brass, that's what you do. So that's it. That's everything about Brass Birmingham. And it is absolutely fantastic. I feel like, personally for me, this is that Empire Strikes Back more so than Temple of Doom. I love the original. It's really fantastic, especially with the updated version. See? Look at this guy. Especially with the updated version. But playing Brass Birmingham, I was a little leery because I was like, well, wait a minute. Brass is so good. How can they mess with the system? How can they tweak it to make it any different, right? And they did it. They managed to take the things that I already loved about Brass Birmingham, no, Lancashire, and turn it into something even better. For instance... Gone are the days of the foreign cotton market. I love that so very much that the cotton market is gone. How about the fact that there's multiple uh, now goods tiles that can be sold at the markets? And that's a new thing. Instead of just cotton mills, you can sell, well, you've got the pottery, you've got the uh, refined goods, and you also have cotton. So lots of different things to activate with. Uh, I love those little tweaks, those little changes. I mean, really, though, that's kind of the main thing. So the question comes down to, do you need both of these? Well, you don't need both, but you can play both and enjoy the differences in both experiences in a sense of watching Star Wars A New Hope and then watching Empire Strikes Back. There's enough difference there to where you can, and if you enjoy brass, first of all, if you enjoy brass, you can obviously enjoy both of these and really love the experience that both of them give you. I really feel like Birmingham tightens up a lot of the things that brass does, already fantastically tightened in this version uh, than the original, but it does a good job of tightening things up and making it even more accessible all the while um, just adding so much new things, so many new things that make it just even more fun to play. Like the beer, uh, having that be one thing where when you sell, you have to have access to beer. So it's just another little puzzle, another little trinket, tricksy little way to have to get a resource from the board into your use. Now, used to it was just coal, iron you could get from the market, but now you have to be able to get beer. If it's your own beer, you can get it just because it's yours. If it's not your own beer, though, you can either get it from the market, but if the market's out of it, you have to be connected to it somehow. And so you then could be setting up someone else to flip and activate one of theirs. So neat little tricks, neat little things like that that really make Brass Birmingham shine. If you were only going to get one of these, though, which one would you get? Would you get Brass Birmingham or would you get Brass Lancashire? That's the tricky question. I feel like, though, that the winner is going to be Brass Birmingham for me just because I like the streamlined things. I really didn't like the randomness of the cotton market of turning over those things. And, well, too bad you can't sell cotton to the foreign markets anymore. Better hope you have a port or someone else builds a port. Oh, you can't build a port? Tough luck, kid. I like the aspect that that was tweaked in here with Brass Birmingham. Now, is the cotton market obviously thematic? Of course it is. But I like the aspect of there are more things to sell and there are ways to mitigate that if no one has a port out there. There are no ports in this one. Uh, there are no shipyards either for that matter, but you have different ways to get points, including those pottery goods. Really excellent game, Brass Birmingham. But again, it takes the win for me. Now, that being said, I'm going to keep both in the collection because I just enjoy both. I like the way they play differently, right? I play this one a lot more on the app, so I'm more familiar with its system, even though I like this one just a little bit better. So, excellent job, Martin Wallace, or should I say Steven Spielberg? Can we say that? I don't know. Excellent job, Martin Wallace uh, and team at Roxley for putting out these two fantastic, gorgeous upgrades of a game. Wonderful, wonderful job. I want to see more of this. I asked you in the Brass Lancashire review what games you would like to see done like this. A lot of people say Castles and Burgundy. Well, it looks like that might be happening. Uh, not necessarily by Roxy, but by other people. What games would you like to see with that update? And also, what's your favorite game sequel? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff at the latest retro. And until next time, I'll see you. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower 